Find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region in the first quadrant bounded by y equals 3x squared minus x cubed and y equals 0. This will be rotated about the y-axis. The first step in the process is to draw the graph. Now the function y equals 3x squared minus x cubed is a cubic. Usually graphing a cubic is a involved process. But we're saved by the nature of this equation. We do know at least that a cubic would either look like this where it rises going off to the left going off to the right and falls going off to the left or it's gonna look like this where it rises going off to the left and falls going off to the right uh, the first drawing here is when the lead coefficient is positive and the second one here is when the lead coefficient is negative now lead coefficient doesn't mean the first coefficient you see the lead coefficient is the coefficient on the highest degree term on x for us that's a negative one and so our graph should look something like this to understand more about what the graph looks like what we need to do is to find the intercepts okay let's find the x-intercepts and so that requires us to set it equal to zero usually solving a cubic is an involved process but we are missing the constant term and so that makes things easier what we're going to do is factor out the x squared that both terms have in common that'll give you x squared times the quantity of 3 minus x and this is set equal to zero so either x squared equals zero or 3 minus x equals zero if x squared is zero that of course means that x is zero if 3 minus x is zero that means that x is three now something strange happens we only have two roots by this being x squared equals zero this is called a double root we're only going to cross the x-axis twice we know that the graph will look like the leading coefficient being negative and so from that then that's enough for us to figure out that the graph comes down hits the origin goes back up and comes back down and we even know where it crosses the second time at x equals 3 so this is the region they said in the first quadrant so this is the region we're concerned about rotating about the y-axis now let's move to step two in step two what we need to do is decide which method to use I like to have two drawings one where I draw a rectangle that is parallel to the axis of rotation another where I draw a rectangle that is perpendicular to the axis of rotation the one that's parallel to the axis of rotation is the shell method the one that's perpendicular to the axis of rotation is either disc or washer and it's based on the fact of whether or not there's a gap between the axis and your region and so in this case it's going to be a washer because there's this defined gap between your axis and your region okay great so for shell we have to know the formula for volume 2 pi times the integral from a to b the radius times the height for washer we need to know the formula for volume and it's pi times the integral from a to b of the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared now because this is a vertical rectangle it gets moved from left to right so it'll be an x in this particular instance because this is a horizontal rectangle it'll be moved upwards and down it'll be moved upwards 
in order to accumulate the volume and so washer would have to be in y if you're in x then you have everything y is f of x if you're in y you're gonna have everything x is g of y with this particular function being 3x squared minus x cubed we don't want to have to solve it for y in fact we won't be able to get a closed form solve a solution for it in, in y so with all that said then that helps us to realize that washer is not the way to go and we need shell for shell what we need is the radius and the height so to get the radius what we're gonna do is attach the rectangle that you drew to the axis of rotation that distance there is the radius now that's the distance off the y-axis and that distance is called x so our radius should be x the height of the rectangle is just the distance up to the function and so the distance up to the function in this case is just our our f of x which is going to be 3x squared minus x cubed so let's go with this and now let's set up the calculation let step 3 to perform the calculation so we have the volume is 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 3 the radius of x times the height of 3x squared minus x cubed let's go ahead and distribute when we distribute the x what we get is 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 3 3x cubed minus x to the fourth that's gonna be our volume now we take the antiderivative of each using the power rule in reverse so our volume is going to be 2 pi times the expression of 3x to the fourth over 4 minus x to the fifth over 5 that antiderivative needs to be evaluated from 0 to 3 first we'll plug a 3 in then we'll plug a 0 in plugging a 3 in let's leave it as 3 to the fourth over 4 times 3 minus 3 to the fifth over 5 that's the upper limit plugged into your antiderivative now the lower limit plugged in conveniently gives us 0 0 to the fourth and 0 to the fifth so we now just need to get the final answer we recognize that 3 to the fifth is actually in both fractions we have here because 3 times 3 to the fourth is 3 to the fifth so to make our life easier we're going to factor that out we're going to factor out 3 to the fifth so by doing that it leaves us with 1 fourth minus 1 fifth and so 1 fourth is going to be uh, the common denominator between these two is 20 so 1 fourth is 5 twentieths 1 fifth is 4 twentieths we subtract and what we get is 1 twentieth we have this 2 pi and 3 to the fifth is 243 and finally then we can take this 20 and turn the 2 into a 1 at the same time turning the 20 into a 10 our final answer is that the volume is equal to 243 pi all over 10 whatever unit you have cubed